Okay, we're gonna take a closer look at the processing pipeline to see how it works in action. Um, before we do that though, what I wanna do is just sort of orient us to the overall process and a couple of the major concepts here. So one of the first concepts is that the processing pipeline itself is a workflow that orchestrates many different workflows, what we've called RevOps microservices in this post. And the way that it starts is it always starts with an intake workflow. This is a purple box or a box really just because it's a set of workflows, right? We have lots of lead sources. Oops. So conceptually, what that means is that we have leads from our website, from chat, from list uploads, from you know APIs that we programmatically source, you name it. And the job of an intake workflow is to capture a lead and normalize it, okay? So, so that's what we're gonna look at first, is this intake workflow that we have, which is a, just a demo workflow that we're gonna pretend as if it was receiving leads from a website form. And so the job of this workflow is to capture a lead, normalize the data, and send it to the pipeline. And the way that we're gonna pretend like we're capturing a lead is we're just gonna use Postman to send this fake lead through, right? So I'm gonna create a new lead in this case. So I'm just gonna add some fake data here. I'll just say demo pipeline one, two, three, let's say. Okay, and I'm gonna send it to that endpoint of this workflow here. So I sent it through and we can actually see it come in here in real time. It should come here, there it goes, okay? And, and if we look at the output of what we were we sent this workflow, then what we'll see are all the values we sent through, right? Demo pipeline one, two, three, email address. And the first step is to send it to our normalization workflow, which we showed in a previous video, which turns our payload into a person object, a company object, and an attribution object, which we then pass through to the pipeline. And so to orient you quickly to the pipeline, what we're doing is the first thing we're doing is we're validating if the email is actually valid. If it is, we'll then search to see if there's an existing leader contact. In this case, there won't be one because I know that leader contact doesn't exist. So we'll go down this branch. We'll check to see if we have required properties like job title and phone and company size and country and industry. And if we don't have those, we'll programmatically enrich it. We'll then take our objects of person, company, and so on that we've gotten back from pro programmatic enrichment. And we'll reshape them into the structure that Salesforce requires to update or create a lead. Once we create the lead, we'll map it back to our, from a Salesforce structure into our person, company, attribution, and so on structure. We'll check to see if this is a lead or a contact. If it's a lead, we'll call our lead to account matching workflow. If, lead, if our lead to account matching workflow converts it to a contact, we'll research for the contact so we can get all the properties from it, like its new contact ID and so forth. We'll then check and see, do we have attribution data, right? So do we have a Salesforce campaign ID and UTMs and all those sorts of things? And then we'll see um, whether or not we um, want to send it to attribution. In some cases, we don't want to send it to attribution. For example, if it was programmatically sourced versus, uh, and it was an existing contact, we don't want to give credit to programmatically sourced contacts for existing leads or contacts. Uh, if it and, and so if it passes these checks, we send it to our attribution workflow, which creates a campaign membership. We check to see if there's a score. If there is not, we score it. We update the status of the lead to open. We check to see if it's an inbound lead. If they are an inbound lead, for example, not programmatically sourced, then we'll, we'll check and see if it needs to be routed. We know that it needs to be routed if it's owned by an ops user. We'll call rules of engagement. Rules of engagement checks and see, sees if it's an existing customer, if there's open opportunities, if there's recent activity on the lead from a SDR or an AE, and it says how to route it. 
Should we round robin? Should we direct? We then pass those rules to an assignment workflow, which assigns the lead either direct or round robin based on the rules that this workflow gave us. And then we call a sequencing workflow. That basically puts them in an outreach sequence, which begins, which is based upon their lead score, which in, indicates the SLA for the lead, right? So there'll be more touches in the sequence that are sooner. Uh, if it's an A lead versus a D lead, there'll be less touches that don't need to happen quite as fast. Finally, we check and see if we should send it, if we've already sent it to manual enrichment. If we haven't, we'll check and see if the required properties again are still missing after programmatic enrichment. And if they are, we'll send it over to our manual enrichment vendor. So if we wanna actually look at this lead and how it went through the pipeline, we can see that we sent it over at 6.05. And here it is right here. It took two minutes to process that lead. We can kind of see the exact outcomes of each step. So we can see when we sent it to validation, it said, yes, it's a valid lead. When we looked it up, we can see that we didn't find one. The response from the workflow is empty or null. We can see that we did not find a phone or a title or employees or industry or country. So we can see then, well, what happened when we got it back from programmatic enrichment? Did we find a job title? We didn't find a job title. What about for the company? Did we find any other company data? Oh, we did. We found much more company data. So we went ahead and created the lead. And then when it got down here, did we need to actually lead to account match it? Oh yes, it is a lead. Therefore, we do want to lead to account match it. We converted it to a contact. We came down, we sent it to our attribution workflow. That took about seven seconds. It did not have a, sc a score. Therefore, we do need to apply an initial score. You can see the, the scores were empty. When it came back, we had a demographic firmographic score, which we called fit. We had a behavioral score. We updated the status. We know that it's inbound. We know that it needs routing. We called our routing rules. We can see that our routing rules essentially tell us that, oh, this is a trait email. Therefore, we know it's a test and we'll round robin route it to the growth ops team in America. We then pass those rules, which in turn say, okay, we've routed it to Niels on the growth ops team. We call our sequencing workflow. We can see, no, we didn't sequence it. It was just a test. And we didn't send it to manual enrichment because we don't send test emails to manual enrichment. All of that happened in about two minutes. I come over to my Slack. I'm gonna guess I'll have a Slack bot message here. Oh yes, Niels. Ne hey, Niels. Niels just engaged with the RevOps framework lead processing pipeline demo uh, campaign. So, so all that happened in that time. Um, and if we want, I can even do this with a non-tray email. So let's just say I wanted to do my uh, a different email here. We'll just do a dummy one. Um, so I'll say nhpo plus pipeline tester at gmail.com this time and we'll send that one in and the whole process will begin again it'll pop up here in just a second and uh, i'll probably pause the video for a moment so that i can show you the outcome of this okay we're done all right so in this case uh recall that i created a new lead with a non-company email address, just a Gmail address. And so essentially pretty much the same kind of run that I showed you the first time. Some, some of the more interesting things here to perhaps look at would just be uh, the outcome of the rules of engagement workflow, right? So same, pretty much the exact same process. It ended up actually matching me to Trey, all that sort of stuff. Um, but in this case, you know, we are gonna round robin route it to the platform uh, commercial SDR team because it's an unknown company size in the American region, right? So that's kind of a little bit different, right? We actually now, when we called the assignment workflow, we sent it to one of our SDRs on the platform commercial team. 
Um, we were able to actually sequence it to the sequence ID 633. We know that's true. Um, we know, or in this case right now, um, we know it's an unknown company size and whenever there's an unknown company size, we send it to manual enrichment. So we sent it over to our manual enrichment vendor and um, otherwise it was pretty much the same uh, exact process that I showed you before. So this is how the pipeline works. Uh, extreme visibility into every single step of the process, uh, specific control over however you need to customize it to meet the needs of your process and um, just a real workhorse workflow for us and how we take inbound leads in. So I hope you find that interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'll put a link to my profile there. Um, would love to hear from you.